What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs gotta eat. And we're jumping right into Dynasty content. There is one, one game left in the NFL season. There are trades flying around my Dynasty leagues already. Okay. And I'm sure that's the case with most of y'all, especially if you're in the BDGE Dynasty leagues, which we curate, set up, and run for y'all that are in our Discord. BG dot store forward slash community to get in there as well as getting our dynasty ranks trades are flying around man and there are some very 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 obvious trade targets and players to trade off of your team at this very moment it is peak prime time to get these five running backs which we will talk about today off your dynasty rosters because we saw enough of what we of we, we seen to what we seen all right there ain't no coming back now from that we saw what we saw this year and i think we know what to expect going forward into 2020 to dynasty fantasy football with these players so you need to get them off your team and in order to do that you need to tuck your shirt in first we need to stop yelling we need to eat there comes a time in nearly every player's lifespan that's on your dynasty roster at one point or another, there's a transition period, okay? Every, every basically every player goes through this phase where their their value for trading is is sort of like whoever owns them won't accept anything less than a they won't accept the second for this player, right? However, no one in the league is going to give them a first. Okay, it's a, it's a lot of these quarterbacks, like you, you think of quarterback twos, like the guys who are like the Derek Cars or in that kind of range, the people who own them don't want to give them away for a second, but the people who are trading for them don't really want to give away like the 108. Most players fall into that category where the owners want a first, won't accept a second. The trade fourers will give you a second, but won't give up a first. This first guy, Clyde Edwards Hilaire of the Kansas City Chiefs, is over that hump. We're 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 done with him. It's just not there with Clyde, and the Chiefs know it. And you should know it at this point, okay? I know y'all are gonna be like, new new year, new Clyde in 2022. You fucking idiots. No, we literally just did this song and dance going into last year we were talking about how there was too much competition for him with a fucking 45 year old Le'Veon bell and that's why he dropped off the signs are very obvious and it was my concern all off season he was in a great spot right and i made this video and i talked about how the upside was probably there because of the spot he was in but there's a very high chance that clyde Edwards hilaire is just a super fucking average running back and super average running backs in the NFL end up getting churned out and recycled. And now we have seen two straight years of sample size in which Clyde Edwards Hilaire has continued to lose and lose and lose and lose work in the receiving game, goal line work, regular work. All this motherfucker is basically unemployed at this point. Two guys that are just replacement level players. It continues to happen. I don't know why we're going to push the narrative that it might not happen again next year. OK, not everything is black and white. In fantasy football, 99% uh, uh, of things aren't black or white, okay? It's not like Kyle Edwards is a top five guy or Kyle Edwards is a complete bust. He is sitting in purgatory and he will continue to sit there and slowly move himself further and further down the rankings. I just updated my season long rankings this morning, which you could also get as part of this package. And I moved him down to like RB 30 ish next year. And I think that's probably about where you need to be. He's just in a committee. That, that's what it's going to be. And if you can't see that right now, I question. I question you, and I question your mother, and I question the upbringing that she had for you. I was going to release this last week, right? And we saw Jarek McKinnon dominate the snaps against the Bills in that backfield during that game. And I was like, you know, I want to wait one more week because I know Clyde was coming back from the ankle injury, and he wasn't really at full strength. But then he got a full week of practice in this week. And still, Jarek McKinnon dominated the snaps and the touches and the work in this backfield. Clyde is just being replaced on all levels of the field, man. Tell you what, kind of ironic. Remember during the uh, the NFL draft process when everyone kept asking, like, who's the best NFL player you played with? You know, the Chiefs are trying to get a feel for which running back to take. And Joe Burrow said, Joe Burrow played college football with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and still said that Clyde was the best athlete he's ever played football with. Makes you think. Makes you think that he was in it for the long game. Joey B would be in it for the long game. He had them use the first round pick on Clyde so he could beat them in the fucking AFC Championship game three years later. You love to see it. This was a trade that went down in my uh, Go Fade Me Dynasty League the other day. Sexy Pats got Chris Godwin and a back end of the third. He gave up Clyde and uh, 
the 2-5. I guess the pick really kind of even things out there because you're jumping up 15 spots in the rookie draft. This is a super flex league, so it's a little more valuable. I'm going to be honest, even with Godwin tearing the ACL, and this was pre-Brady retiring, so it's obviously a little bit of a hit there. But even with Godwin, see, that that's what I'm saying right now. Like even Brady retiring Godwin ACL tear I probably still take the Godwin side because I believe in him so much more of a player like Clyde Whistler straight up might just be he might be like Gio Bernard in two years he might just be a guy who gets like seven touches a game possibly he might be a nothing to your dynasty team Chris Godwin is still like 25 years old still very young so I would take the Chris Godwin side of that trade even even with all the nonsense surrounding what he's going through right now with the ACL with Brady retiring and you look at like what Clyde Edwards Lair has done basically like two years in man like 12.2 half PPR fantasy points per game 10.6 this year not including the playoffs by year two if you're like a real breakout running back candidate you've put up big numbers if you had a big year um, and I remember everyone like he had a thousand yards from scrimmage his rookie year it's like you're a shit running back if you're a starting running back in the Chiefs offense and can't get a thousand total yards from scrimmage it's not a difficult feat to have like if you're a first round NFL draft pick when you have that capital you get workhorse volume ASAP and you're either good enough to maintain it or they wipe it away from you fucking quickly so with Clyde Edwards Lair like I said we're past that hump man I'm if I can get the 201 form if I can get the 202 I'd probably go as far down as like the 203 204 for Clyde Edwards Lair and I think you could probably get that done the next guy up on this list and this one hurts a little bit more to say and that's Mr. Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers and this yeah this one stinks man because he's been such a fun fantasy player to own the last few years outside of this previous year the way I look at Aaron Jones going forward in fantasy is there is no reason whatsoever not to believe that there is going to be a complete split between Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon going forward in this backfield like they showed us exactly what it was going to be over the entire almost the entire season when you look at these splits AJ Dillon in the games when he played with Aaron Jones and Aaron Jones in the games he played with AJ Dillon so I wiped out the first three weeks of the season because we didn't really know what the split was going to be and Aaron Jones had his one monster game early on in the year where he had like 38 fantasy points otherwise uh, besides that he's been extremely mediocre so you might say that's bullshit but it was really early on in the year I don't think we had the split set up yet and it was the one complete outlier game but the final from weeks four through 17 so you're gonna a 12 game sample size and the numbers are almost identical for these two in terms of volume in terms of production uh, AJ Dillon, 12.4 rush attempts per game. Aaron Jones, 11 rush attempts per game. Obviously, he had a little bit more in the target and reception department, but this is completely uh, a, a split, and you're seeing the rushing touchdown numbers. That's what's more dramatic for a guy like Aaron Jones because he was someone who was scoring like 12 to 15 rushing touchdowns per year. That's what made him an elite fantasy option. 0.17 rushing touchdowns per game in games where A.J. Dillon plays. A.J. Dillon, 0.42. They were using him more on the goal line, okay? And very much like Clyde Slayer, like Aaron Jones, 12.2 half PPR fantasy points per game. Like, that's fine. You could use that as like your RB2. You could use it in your flex, but it's not Aaron Jones. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the price that you paid if you if you bought him last offseason the ROI is negative right now and like I said the big hit came on the goal line like Dylan led the team with 10 goal line carries Jones had just six and if you look at the previous two seasons Jones has averaged 11 goal line carries per year so almost double the rate in the previous two years as to this year and AJ Dillon's the fucking reason why so for me it's very very clear that this is going to be a committee going forward and uh it's a committee that really really hampers Aaron Jones's ceiling so if you can get some solid return on Aaron Jones if you can get a top five rookie pick or something like that I would absolutely be willing to do it I would do the same for Rashad Penny he's one of those guys that I would flip for an early second round pick absolutely right if you happen to catch one of those fucking stray championships because of Penny you caught a twofer you're like fake intern Tony pulling up to the comedy cellar very first time in his entire life both Louis CK and Aziz Ansari step out on the goddamn podium that's bullshit that's fucking not one of them is bullshit I'm wrapped up about that gets fucking two that's like Rashad Penny owners not only do they catch a championship but now they can flip Rashad Penny for an early second late first round pick all right here's the way I look at Penny I am I'm someone who's very 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 in favor of needing a large sample size so I will take a four-year sample size over a four game sample size and that's all we have of Rashad Penny okay I'm gonna lay out the facts for you right now the obvious His ability to stay healthy is not good. He has missed 28 games during the portion of his rookie contract. The rookie contract is four years. That is nearly half of his entire rookie contract. The Seahawks declined his fifth-year option. There's no guarantee he's even in Seattle next year, okay? There's just as good of a chance that he gets signed elsewhere, and he's a rotation back that he is coming back. If you're holding on to Rashad Penny, you are banking on so many things going right for him. I'm going to lay out like nine red flags for you, okay? This is fucking finance bro in Manhattan right now type of red flag shit. Rashad Penny, fifth-year option, 
declined just as big of a chance to be a rotation back elsewhere as he is to be re-signed in Seattle because you know why they gave Chris Carson money last off season. Best case scenario is Rashad Penny re-signs with Seattle, right? They just they just say, "Hey, we fucked up. We give him the bag." But the Chris Carson signing is two negatives for Rashad Penny because Chris Carson got money. Now, does Seattle think twice before investing more money into the running back position? I know that's like something they have a fucking fetish about and running backs, and uh, they probably won't take much convincing for them to sign a check for another running back, but. You know, it might make them think twice. Carson is back next year, okay? It's a two-year deal. Last year was the first year. Bad year. Serious injury. He's not going to be anywhere near the, you know, once upon a time 20-touch Chris Carson that he was. But if he's healthy, they love him, man. He's going to be a part of this rotation. So that hurts Penny a little bit, too. The other the other thing is, like, is Russell Wilson even in Seattle? Like, Seattle is a three-win team without Russell Wilson under center. Fuck, they were a seven-win team this year in a 17-game season with Russ. So I can only imagine how bad they're going to be. I don't want a two-down thumper in an awful offense, right? These are all things that might or might not happen. Chris Carson, Russell Wilson, Rashad Petty, all contract things that are kind of up in the air right now. We've heard a lot of rumors about Russ not being happy in Seattle. I don't know how you could be happy in Seattle right now. Linked him to the Giants, right? Like that's a very real scenario that Russell Wilson can end up in New York next year. Penny literally had six catches last year on eight targets. Six catches the entire year on eight targets. All that volume over the last month of the season where he blew up was strictly on the ground. So you're looking at a guy who is probably part of a shitty offense. Yes, he has some nice explosive runs. And yes, he was awesome down the stretch last year. But again, it's such a small sample size to bank on with all these red flags. Like, listen, if Chris Carson was a free agent, if we knew Russ was happy, if this was a, a nine wins, uh, nine win team that had some momentum going on offense, if they had signed him to a fifth year contract right now, there's too many uncertainties to just assume that they're all going to go in the favor of Rashad Penny. So if you can move Rashad Penny for an early second round pick, I'm doing that a sap fucking rocky yes sir fourth running back on this list is josh jacobs of the las vegas raiders if i own josh jacobs i'm trying to offload him we're now three years in and i think we're no we know what we get from josh jacobs and he's a good he's a solid rb2 that will score touchdowns and play well when the raiders win games but he's not that consistent and he's not someone that's ever going to win you leagues Kenyon Drake will probably be back sooner rather than later. He had a big pass catching year this year, Josh Jacobs, career highs, obviously. But both Kenyon Drake and Jalen Richard missed significant, significant extended periods throughout the year. Uh, Josh Jacobs actually had his worst fantasy points per game season this year since entering the league. We have a new regime. We have a new head coach. Who knows if they want to just continue feeding Josh Jacobs the ball 20 times a game. I'd probably rather shoot my shot on someone with more upside. If you can move him for an actual player, one of these younger players, if you can move him for like a J.K. Dobbins type, uh, if you can move him for Dobbins and a second or third or something like that, that would be wonderful. Uh, I think there's more upside there. Jacobs is like a good fantasy piece again, but he's not going to help you win if he's not going to help you win leagues, and I understand if you have a stack team and he's like your flex player or something, you want to hold on to him. I, I think that's probably worth doing. Um, but at the end of the day, when you drafted him at like the 101 a couple of years ago, and I think the upside, this was probably his highest upside year because of the pass catching. I don't know how steady that pass catching role is actually going to be with a new head coach and with those other running backs who were banged up most of the year. So Josh Jacobs is a guy that I'm selling the last player on this list. Okay. I want to know who you're selling actually before I get to number five. Who is one running back in Dynasty? that you are trying to offload right now, literally right now, go do it, go do it, go comment, hit the thumbs up. While you're down there, while you're down there, there's a link. It's the first link in the description. It's going to take you to Felix Gray. Y'all know I love my Felix Grays. These are blue light blocking glasses. You know, I've talked about them ad nauseum. That's not a good description for it because you never get sick of these bad boys. I wear them every, literally every single night. As soon as the sun goes down, you put the Felix Grays on, your body starts getting into night mode, all right? Your eyes will no longer get strained from staring at screens all day. It was one of the biggest improvements to my life when I started first doing all this content creation bullshit because I was staring at screens all fucking day. I was working 12 to 14 hours a day, and by the end of it, I looked like a dead person, man. You could have thrown me right in the, uh, into the morgue, and I would have I would have camouflaged right in there, but no longer. I'm a young, healthy, vibrant man. Thanks to Felix Gray. This is without a doubt the best purchase I have made under $100 for my health, for my safety, for my sanctity. If you are someone that is in bed and you watch TV before you're going to sleep or you're like this on your fucking cell phone before you're going to sleep, these things will block the light that emits into your fucking eyeballs and, and make you not sleep. All right. These are the single best purchase I made $100. I really, 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 truly, truly, truly mean that. So go check out Felix Gray. Again, the link is in the description. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up and all that stuff. Devin Singletary, the Buffalo Bills. There is just something in my bones that can't buy what Devin Singletary has done over the last month of the season, man. He's been really hot, and it's kind of like Rashad Penny. But I want you to take an objective look 
here is career stats year by year. I want you to look at the actual lines. This year, 2021, it was actually almost exactly like every other year. The only difference here is that he had eight touchdowns this year as opposed to the four his rookie year and two in 2020. And I know he had a you know big playoff run, so those numbers don't factor into this regular season run, but it's very much the same player. 11.1 fantasy points per game is rookie year, 7.8 in 2020, 10.5 this year. He won't touch 200 carries. 40 catches is, you know, probably around what you're going to get. And he's not an explosive player. So you see the, the catch radius over there, 6.7 yards per reception, 7.1, 5.7. So you're getting 40 catches that he does nothing with. Okay. At the end of the day, Singletary is a slow, small, unathletic running back. He's just not that good of a running back. He just has the the fortune uh, of finding himself in a really, really, really good situation. It's very similar to Clyde edwards helaire They're probably about the same value going forward. And these are exactly the types of players that you sell in Dynasty, okay? Players with really high recency bias and players who aren't that talented but are in really good situations because we all know situations change like... Okay. Um, and I'm sure the running back rumors are going to start sw swirling for the Buffalo Bills sooner rather than later. It's every offseason talking about linking them to free agents and linking them to high draft capital running backs, players like that. So I think the value for Devin Singletary has nowhere to go but down. You know, if things stay uh, if things stay sexy for him out there in Buffalo, then listen, I'll I'll uh, I'll unload some draft capital and best ball drafts, maybe some season long drafts. But right now in Dynasty, he's just not the type of player with his profile and the small sample size of being good that you want to hold on to when you can get some real, real value squeezed out of this man. OK, so Devin Singletary is the fuck out of here. So we have the list just to recap. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Aaron Jones, Rashad Penny, Josh Jacobs, Devin Singletary, five running backs I'm trying to offload from my dynasty roster right the fuck now. OK, do it. Do it. Send them out. Send out some offers. Let me know what those offers were. Let me know if your league mates accepted. Let me know uh, what players you're trying to offload right now from your dynasty team. OK, that is all I got for you today. I will be bike. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What. I love you, though. Let's get wild.